little after the show. <laughs> smoke break for all the smokers, <laughs> since we're not smokers. Okay. This is Karma Furniture. Uh, I can't even remember if I read this here before, but this is something I wrote while I was in Oregon. I firmly believe that you are an, if you are an asshole in this life, you will be reincarnated as a piece of furniture. I'm not talking Gucci or Chippendale furniture. I'm not even talking about a cute little end table from Sears. I am talking IKEA, or even worse, Walmart Mart college dorm room specials furniture. I have it on good authority that Hitler was reincarnated as a reinforced toilet seat made for a plus-size woman with a fondness for Taco Bell. That's right, reinforced, no easy way out for you this time, Hitler. Mao Zedong is the IKEA Entertainment Center picked up by a yokel in Texas because it was all special. Held together by duct tape and Gorilla Glue, his particle board shelves now sway under the weight of monster truck rally DVDs, porn, hunting games, and the dirty cowboy booted feet of friends who come to visit. Zedong's reincarnated life wouldn't seem so bad except for the skull stains around its base where the spitters miss the trash can and the tip natural light can that has been slowly dripping down his back for the past semester. <laughs> Mussolini was reincarnated as a Princess Leia body pillow decked out in full slave girl regalia with an open mouth and soft, poseable limbs. Yes, please. Auctioned off at Comic-Con. One by a sweaty-faced, sweaty-palm chubby nerd who had marked her breastplate with Cheeto fingertips before he even got it home. Oliver Cromwell was returned to this world in the form of a training potty, the only one in an Irish Catholic household of 12 children born 10 months apart and with chronic diarrhea. Pol Pot came back as a fold-out changing table in an Indian food restaurant's bathroom. One, the owner cleans by running the mop over it once a month after cleaning the rest of the restroom. Black water dripping down Pol's yellowed plastic and back onto the floor. Stalin is now spending his days as the sauna bench used exclusively by the 80s and over club at the Golden Age Retirement Home in Tucson, Arizona. But I have to say, Papa Doc Duvalier received the worst fate. He came to our dorm room as a pink, fluffy, pillow-topped ottoman. Every day he sees a new horror for this Papa Doc. He, his, while resting her feet on what has to be his face, my roommate cuts her toenails, paints them, and scrapes her bunion-prone feet. She wipes her hand dry, hands dry on the sides of his head when she exits the bathroom, has thrown up on him twice when the seasonal flu gets her, and she sits hunched on him whenever she gets the cramps. So the next time you sit on a stadium bleacher that is wearing a dirty diaper and a chili dog for a hat, say hi to Nixon for me, and remember, don't be an asshole. Next yes! Time. Because it was Tuesday, it was my day to walk the residents of Pleasant Valley Care Home. 9 a.m., old Mr. Betts, who couldn't keep all his thoughts in his head, and greeted people with updates on his bowel movements and what he'd do to his nurse if he was 30 years younger. 10 a.m., Granny Peaches. No one knows why, but she has a stick horse named Feathers that comes on every walk with us. 11 a.m., Liddy Grubber a somewhat wilted Southern Magnolia and an ex-track and field Olympian who suffers from phantom hot flashes and can be seen sprinting away from the orderly, stripping her clothes off and declaring how hot it is. 12 p.m., quiet Darius Canfield, who carries a pocket watch, gold, with brass knuckles attached to the end. He walks with my hand tucked into his arm and he points out stores that used to hold cockfights and floating craps games and quietly tells me how to make someone disappear. 1 p.m. Gertrude Messerschmidt, or Gaga Gertie, a retired beat who alternates between coherent conversation and mutterings about the Bolsheviks and imagined affairs with the son of John Reed. 2 p.m. Vladimir Kostas, a Greek immigrant who made his living in glue production, a thousand sappy puns about sticking and hands that tell me he hasn't given it up. I could work somewhere else. The bar I frequent is hiring. I could leave my Pleasant Valley ID badge and keys on the visitor's counter and never look back. I could throw away the inappropriate note Mr. Betts has left me, the lock of feathers, may, and grainy peaches tucked into my pocket, the memory of Liddy running through the hallway in nothing but her slipper socks, with her arms wide, clothes lining orderlies, and knocking over IVs. I could stop reading about the beats if I didn't have to talk to Gaga Gertie every Tuesday. I wouldn't worry about the mob coming after me for what quiet Darius let slip, and I could throw away the baby wipes I kept in my purse to wipe the glue off my cheek after Vladimir held my face to give me a Mediterranean double kiss after our walks. I could change my Tuesday schedule, but why would I want to? Woo!